103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, August 29th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. So the trick to a hyzer throw is you got to lean over it, and then it'll flip up, and then it'll fade. That's how you get the distance. That's how you get the distance. I have to start calling that the Wombat throw, then. You'll perfect nice. it. <laughs> nice. And with us today, we have uh, Gary, or... Uh, oh. The Dread Pirate Dread Kings. Fire Kings. <laughs> That's right. Ahoy there. Uh, George Brown, the two and a half. Hello, George. And Dot uh, Fire, welcome. You're on mute, both of you. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is talk radio show uh, about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Uh, Wombat, what are we starting off with today? Our invocation? I, yeah, absolutely. But we're going to be doing a show on music. And I think who better can lead us into such a wonderful, uh, what is it? What are those things called? Pirate? uh shanties who who better to lead us into uh, <laughs> well i don't quite have a shanty as it were <laughs> but i do have a prayer okay we'll leave it up to you our our noodly lord who art in a colander el dante be thy noodles thy blood be rum thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we put up with those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Hey, we're starting to get that uh, nice and coordinated there. Yeah, yeah like I said, we need to have our own little shanty <laughs> set up. Speaking of which, are you telling me for true, for real, that you don't know any shanties? I, I am, I am pressed to not believe this. Ah. Uh, no, that one. Hey. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do with a drunken sailor, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sober him up. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dred, how you been? I'm happy that uh, you you don't look singed. You look like you're in one piece. How you been? What's going on with you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. I got back um, on uh, Thursday. So I'll in all likelihood be deployed again because we still have, I think it's 239 fires. Uh, Wow. happening here in british columbia so yeah well it'll be well into october so wow um nice. i've i've been doing day shifts so uh that's why i wasn't it was not last week uh because it's a seven to seven uh shift and uh you know out in a remote area there's no signal so right now yeah. help me are, are these like controlled fires or are these complete wildfires or out of control well, they're white they're wildfires so um and of course they they do a lot of uh, controlled backburns and and all that kind of stuff to uh, get these things under control so yeah it's it's a it's a big deal uh, we were up at uh, i was up at a place called hundred mile house um where they've uh, taken over the airport and set up the fire camp right on the uh, airstrip um so yeah it's a pretty big deal wow geez, yeah. geez i'm sorry about that yeah. i what what's the outlook like is this something that we can actually you know hope to maintain as like a like a human well it's this? the new normal right you know like uh if global warming is uh, gonna keep these temperatures up we had we had a heat bubble here where it was uh, 44 degrees uh, celsius uh, the hottest temperatures uh, in one place that actually burned down completely, the community burned down, called Lytton. Um, they had temperatures of 47 degrees. Wow. That's, wow. Uh, that's really, really hot. <laughs> that's really, really hot. So for Without the fire. <laughs> so yeah. what, is that in, what is that in Fahrenheit for us, yeah. Yank? Uh, I don't know Over what you 100. Americans call it, so... Uh, so like room temperature in Celsius is 23 degrees. That's standard. Yeah. This is yeah, like yeah. twice as hot as that, which is like, you know, one degree. It's well over a hundred. Well over a hundred. Yeah. This is, this is very, very hot. This is very, 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 very hot. Yeah. It hurts to go outside basically. I... Um, yeah. 
it sucks. You know, I always think, okay, so here's my one morbid thought before we move on. Uh, global warming is sort of like the earth having a fever where it's like, oh, I had a bad case of the humans for 10,000 years, but now. Yes. Again. Right. <laughs> You've got to be vaccinated <laughs> against the human but, species. Well, like I'm going to be okay. I just have a little fever. Just going to wait it out for 30,000 years. It'll be, an, it'll be a blink of the eye. That's right. uh, so we got to either get our act together or figure out how to make rocket ships that work very, very <laughs> well, very, very soon. <laughs> And not just for billionaires that own big companies. George Brown, right. speaking of money, speaking of big companies, speaking of the man watching us, how you been and how have you been under this under the watchful eye of big tech? Well, um, I don't know how to answer that this morning, but I have something really neat to share. Sure. Um, I, uh, I'm the way I'm wired mentally, I have to try things and use them uh, extensively in order to understand whether I want to have them in my life or not. So I have a little goodie that I bought that I want to share with you all. Absolutely. Is this is a timer that's timing our show right now for me. Okay. Nice. And it came from Amazon. It's overpriced at about $15. It's a piece of junk. And there are about 30 of these things. They're all coming out of the same factory. Every one of them has a different brand name. It's all the same product. Um, one of them goes around in the opposite direction. Another one has a light instead of a beep. But okay. what it does is it shows you the passage of time and your remaining time as a disappearing pie. Nice. How nice that is. If you happen to have ADD, this is going to help you relate to time. That is very useful. I should have one of those for the radio show. Now you're giving me Well, when I when I was in radio, I used a darkroom timer in oh. front of me. Okay. So because I had holes in programs that were exactly one minute long within which to read a commercial that was nice. exactly one minute long. So a visual you know, uh, analog clock face can work wonders. And George, I'm going to throw this question out at you. Do you have any tapes of your recorded broadcasts, like any of the commercials that you did? Do you still have any access to that? I do have a few. I don't know where they are. You know, um, the only thing is I, I listened to one. I'm, I listened to one. This was over 50 years ago. I listened to one recently, and I thought, God, do I sound young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm at the point now where, you know, because of COVID, when I watch my old um, SC videos, I think to myself, like, who's this cool guy? And how does he know the answer for everything? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> like, I never want to go. I never want to try this again. It'll be um, I, my past self has made me too intimidated. Um, yeah. Scott, I want to throw this out at you. Beautiful head of hair. I barely recognize you, my friend. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, deciding to grow it back in a little bit. So, so this is what happens when Scott finally releases a, a huge major project. Like, it's all the stress <laughs> is gone, and it's just. <laughs> it. Scott, why don't you tell me what the, the big news? Oh, yeah. So um, the EP that I've been working on for about a year now um, called Up To Us is finally completed and released. So it's all on Spotify, um, every major outlet. Um, it has been uh, it's up for a Grammy nomination this year. Wow. So I'm hoping that it's going to win the best in club and dance for uh uh, that particular genre. So that's the big hope. And it, just to let you guys know, it's, uh, Deborah Magone and dub shine. That's my, my, uh, moniker. And it's a, I like to think of it as my, uh, project towards secular humanism because it's a pop, you know, it's a very positive message about how to reach our goals collectively and individually. That's all the songs run off that major theme but wow. yeah it's, it's it's a positive message it's i have a lot of hope for it you know a lot of work went into it um i think lady gaga's engineer worked on mixing it down and stuff so nice. that's pretty it sounds crisp it sounds really nice cool. I was playing scott it. I was how, do we, how do we can you put that link in yeah, yeah i'll put the link in no problem at all cool. yeah absolutely i'll put i'll put in the youtube comments as well but like 
engineering music has become my new favorite thing about making music and and you're such a good engineer already like i can hear that throughout the song there's one thing or one or two things that you want me to hear or listen to the entire mm -hmm. way through and it changes and you always take my attention on one thing and then you come yep. right back to the hook and then there's compliments to it but nothing over overpowers each other and it's just like this is such like I developed the ear for it now to really appreciate the music that you make. It's really great. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's kind of like a conversation, you know, yes. it's like if there's a point you want to highlight, I'm trying to figure out ways to really accentuate that particular point without it getting, you know, boring or too magnified in that area. But yeah, it's, it's an art form to that stuff. We're going to be talking about music way more into the show and we're going to get back to this album, but I do want to touch bases with Larry. We're going to start with the segment that I'm going to call, what's on the shirt what's on the shirt what's on the shirt larry tell me what's on oh, the shirt. this is just your typical hawaiian shirt i got palm trees and, <laughs> and um the woodies and sailing ships and things like that so it's, you know, it's just why larry i don't know if you've ever worn the same shirt twice on this show We've, sure we've done this. <laughs> he looks to the left. He looks to the left and up when he says that. That's classic lies. We got to remember that. We got to read the body language here. But I, I love that. What have you been up to, my friend? Oh, nothing. Not a lot. Just no, I'm on computer chilling. most of the time, um, playing games or arguing with people on Facebook or just making points and posts. Uh, I need to do some more writing, but I haven't done that much lately. But I'm um, I'm hoping to get back into it somewhat. I've got some topics I'd like to get back into. Very very from nice. my blog. Very very nice. I'm hoping when you say you're playing games, you don't just mean like Candy Crush on mobile. Like you're playing something. Oh like no, Eden these are Online. first person shooters, pretty much. Uh, Far Cry Five. Nice. Um, Eve Online. Um, nice. Very. I saw nice. you on WoW last night. Oh, did you? Yeah, we're on. We were on WoW this morning too. Yeah. Wow. I, I tried hooking up with you, but uh, I guess you weren't, you weren't, didn't have your chat on or something. I guess not. <clears throat> I played a, a really disappointing video game myself, just some insight on me called 12 Minutes. It's a game where you're caught in a time loop and you're trying to stop a hitman from coming into your home and killing your wife and unborn child. And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the stakes are very, very high and you're caught in a 12 minute loop. So you fail, but you wake up at the, beginning when the before the hitman shows up at your front door so you can like move things around and you can try to convince your wife to hide but she's like what are you talking about you're crazy it's like oh how do i get you to listen to me how do i get you to pay attention it's a whole groundhog a day but it's short and it's very grounded for the first two acts then the third act completely goes crazy because you you figure out you need to get information from the hitman so you have to sort of become friends with him and you find out your wife was a, a killer and it's just like Everything falls apart. The whole plot. What's the name of this? <laughs> it's called 12 Minutes. They try to do too much. It ends, I'll throw out spoilers, but it ends with you finding it out that you're actually your wife's brother and your mutual father was a hypnotist who made you forget that you married your wife, who was also <laughs> your sister, because the hitman no, had a daughter who had cancer, but she doesn't matter. Oh, it's so crazy. They had such a simple idea. Keep your ideas simple, guys. Jordan, yeah, right. yeah. sorry. I missed out on something. I think. <laughs> what, exactly is it? what exactly is it that you're talking about? It's What's a bad subject? video game. In my yeah. head. Oh, bad video yeah, game. It's okay. more frustrating for me when a good story ends poorly than when I just watch a bad thing from beginning to end. Like, because there was so much potential there. Speaking. Yeah. I of, agree. I thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. We are talking about music today something that i rarely get disappointed with is music because you know you got my attention for three and a half minutes i'm listening to you i'm having a good time and if i don't like it i can always hit that skip or thumbs down button but i'll tend to find algorithms algorithms have gotten so good these days of just finding music that makes me feel spiritually fulfilled in the most secular sense of i can put it like i definitely feel that there's like something pushing a button in me that's making me groove in a way that spoken word or or a piece of uh, visual art can't do and i feel like the music does tap into something very special i also feel like religious people know that and they can use it <laughs> to their benefit in a lot of ways and so when i listen to music i especially since i've been making music i'm very keenly aware about what is being done to manipulate my my sense of awareness like are they using particular chords that are just done just to try to make me happy 
are they doing that whole thing where they build up and then kill all the momentum just to like tell me the name of the song and then they broke back into the the thing again like i'm i'm listening to that kind of stuff george what do you got what's your what's your story back there simply this Talk with my background in music i want to answer all of your questions with one word the word is yes yes Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I want to talk about what music does to us, how we can be vulnerable to it, and how can we empower ourselves. Maybe what, as atheists, maybe we can find secular means of expressing ourselves through music that might be more advantageous than the routes that we're using right now. And I'll throw that up to Scott first, since he just came out with a secular album. Scott, you said that there was a lot of secular aspects to the music that you're making. Would you mind talking about that and why that's important? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, um, uh, the weird thing about it is the paradigm, usually, at least when you talk to some people, is that religious music is positive and it's all about, you know, God and it's all about, you know, behaving good, good, you know, according to religious, I guess, ideals and things of that nature. And um, even humanistic sort of um, ideas play into that. Well, um, oftentimes when you think about secular music, especially from the viewpoint of religious folks, and believe me, I grew up around it and been around it for a large portion of my young life, is that secular music is looked at as music of the world or music that is in the hands of the wicked one, you know, the devil, or depending on where you come at, your uh, religion, uh, specifically in Christianity, is what I'm referring to. So secular music has a bad rap in the mind of a lot of people. And so what I wanted to do was kind of highlight that secular music can also be just as positive and play on humanistic themes and be sort of a causal force for good, hopefully. Um, like you mentioned, the music, if it feels good, then it sort of creates meaning in the mind of people. And so just like with religious music, if you can have, if you can strike a nice little chord progression or a nice little bass line that is jumping, makes you feel positive, makes you feel good. And then you can kind of in concert with that, you know, um, add some really positive messages and lyrical content, then it can be a full package of positive music for you that resonates within you. Without so that's what I was. That's right. That's right. And so we can use those same tools. Anybody can use those same tools. There's nothing magical about it. It's Absolutely. just a matter of figuring that out. Dred, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, I just remember uh, years and years ago, um, I was hanging out with a bunch of Christians at one point in my life and, and they referred to Christian music as sack rock. I don't know if you've ever heard sack of that. Sack rock? Sacrifice sack rock. rock? Sa sacred. Sacred. Sacred, sacred rock. rock. Yeah. Sacred rock. Sacred so rock. they call it sack rock. Hmm. Eh, I didn't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The idea is kind of weird. <laughs> so I do like the idea of music pulling you into a mind space. So like for a lot of people who may feel like, you know, they are born with original sin and they may not be good enough unless, you know, they open their souls up to Jesus and God and that there's something wrong with them and that they will constantly be, you know, impure until God helps them out. Like, like the way how Christianity is formatted is you are, you have a problem and, and only we can fix it. Right. So you have to live your life with this idea of there's something wrong with me. What I feel like Christianity music does is reinforce the idea that you're loved, that you can be in the mind space that maybe things are going to be okay. That there is a being that does love you, that you do have some control, that you do have some power, that you do deserve to feel happy. And, and for a brief respite you don't have to think about the fact that oh i am a sinner oh i am going to hell if, if, I, if i don't repent oh i do have sins that are unaccounted for oh the jesus had to die for me to for me to feel good like i feel like christian music puts you in a that mindset where that doesn't have to matter as much larry do you think that's valid well i think that the christian music does do that for sure but it does an awful lot of other things but the main thing that gets me about it is that the, you can pass off your sin to somebody else. You, some, you can get Jesus to take responsibility for every bad thing that you've ever done. Hmm. That, it makes no sense. And 
And you we were talking about being good a minute ago and with air quotes around it. It's not really being good. It's being obedient. Right. That's the main thing about the Bible is you have to obey. And ob- obedience is not morality. I mean, the, right. a short jump there, but it's, it, it's the case. Go Scott. ahead, Scott. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add something to that, which kind of reminded me of a conversation I had a few years ago. When I lived in um, Irvine, California, my wife and I and a friend of ours, they live, well, the friend of ours lived next to a, a church. And of course, he wasn't necessarily a believer, but he invited us to go to the church. And knowing full well that we're unbelievers, we're atheists and not really, but he was saying that it was, well, forget about that. It's the music. Come check it out. And we actually went to the church. And I'll be really honest with you. The music was just great. I mean, it sounded like going to a nightclub. Like it was like thumping 125 beats per minute baseline. And I mean, for me, I was in, I was sold. Like you got me like, okay, I understand now. And we used to go to this thing all the time and just enjoy the music. And um, it made us feel good. It it really resonated. Now, nothing changed with our beliefs at all. But the friend of ours was kind of like saying, well, you know, his, his thought after a while was like, well, wait a minute, this music is really great. It makes us feel good. Positive. I mean, isn't this kind of like showing us that maybe there's something to this church stuff that we should believe it. And, you know, of course I didn't, you know, agree with all that. And we had a conversation, but it's just the idea that, um, that musical feeling, that music can influence people to believe mm-hmm. things. And it's yeah. weird. Like I didn't get that from it. Maybe it's because I kind of understand a lot of this stuff, this yeah. whole topic a little better, but for my friend who really didn't care too much about these kind of conversations and philosophy, he was just kind of open to say, Oh, it feels good. It's church. It's making something different. So yeah, why not? It's great for us. I, I think there's absolutely, you hit on something really true. Cause I feel like there is uh, a potential vulnerability that comes from not understanding how music works mm-hmm. on a physiological level or a mental level and, and being exposed to it maybe for one of the first times at a certain <clears> intensity <throat> and realizing that you don't have the muscle memory or the understanding to understand what's what's happening to you and why it's happening to you. Mm-hmm. And music in my head has been around long enough for us to break it down into a science. And so mm-hmm. we know what works good for our gummy little brains to be like, hey, endorphins, I like that pattern mm-hmm. of noise signals. And mm-hmm. and I and and because of it, because there is a strict pattern that makes our brains go like, yeah, mm-hmm. and it almost seems to be universal. It seems we, magical. Yeah. We, it seems magical. And unless if we have the understanding to be like, oh, this is just a pentatonic. Exactly. It sounds good on a pentatonic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and they're mathematically it, 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 sound. This it can fool magic. you. It can That's fool right. you. It can fool you. And you ask someone. So like the weird thing is like, you can ask someone to like name like four or five of their favorite songs. And if they sing the melody like they're all the same scale like 10 they'll tend to be mm-hmm. for the most part mm-hmm. the same scale or same chord progression or same little mm-hmm. pentatonic mm-hmm. Loop. just like look i can play all your favorite songs on the piano right now there's like a mm-hmm. guy <laughs> who's on twitch and there's people who do this all the time they'll play on a piano and they'll take requests from people in a chat room and they'll be like play firefly by owl city or play this and they're playing it and they just bust it out and it's like how did you learn how to play that song it's like because it's the same song because mm-hmm. all these songs mm-hmm. follow more or less the same, very simple rules. And as long as I know the key that I need to play in, I can, I know where all the chords are because our brains are just like, if you just mm-hmm. transpose it by one note, I'll pretend it's a new th- thing and give you all these new hormones again. George, sorry for talking. Two, George 2.5, what's up? Well, um, I, I'm sorry, I missed some of the conversation. I had to you're reboot fine, my fine. computer. Um, first of all, I wanna share <laughs> a realization with everybody, which is that during my lifetime, virtually all popular music is now rock music. (laughs) In other words, every piece of popular music that you hear has Mm -hmm. the same beat. It's a rock beat. Mm -hmm. It's accent on two and four in four four time. This is so incredible. So Mm -hmm. this really, uh, 
uh, isolates and shrinks down the landscape mm. in popular music to yes. one particular beat. Yes. And that's incredible to me. So this, I also believe that rock music is hypnotic. There is something, and now I like the hypnotic element in music mm -hmm. because it carries the feeling, the emotion, the message with it. It is a container mm -hmm. for what we want to communicate. Uh, but having it only one form is almost distressing to me. It's almost like we are advertising our way down to just this is the most effective way to sell a song mm -hmm. or a product or whatever the idea is here and if we need people to go to war we'll just do this but make the song mm -hmm. we were and if yeah we exactly people in the warehouses and to push buttons for our machines we'll make it about love so that we'll have more babies like <laughs> okay. like so well, we have pulling levers it, it's it's four four time with accents on two and four. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. You know, yeah. two, like two, a heartbeat. Three, three verses, one yeah. break, and a uh, pre-chorus, and then the outro, and you're done. Yeah, Scott. Now, when when I was yeah. in radio, we Guys, had. Sorry, but we're at the ha ha uh, we're at the half of the show. We'll come right back after this. Sorry about that, Larry. Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back to this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, second half. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, 20, uh, August 29th, 2021. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for a second. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. We have over 1,000 members now, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during this COVID outbreak, but we're also meeting in person person for those who are uh, got their shots vaccinated uh, out of Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria Deck in the Old City uh, on the patio there. You can find us online also on Facebook, meetup.com uh, or you can just go to knoxvilleatheist.org uh, can just you Google Knoxville Atheist for that matter it's just that simple. By the way if you don't live in Knoxville you can still go to Meetup, search for an atheist group in your town don't find one start, start one. one okay where do we want to pick up there one bet hey we're picking up right with uh uh george 2.5 you were saying something yes um when i worked in radio we transmitted uh classical music however we also transmitted a competing service to muzak on a sub channel and uh that that program ran all the time uh, our our salespeople advertised that we gave different subscribers different kinds of music that would be motivational to their customers so dentists got different music than doctors did than restaurants did than elevators got oh Hell, interesting That's it was all the same music it was always <laughs> we only had one channel of sound. Yeah. Furthermore, I walk. I happen to have um, dealings, reason to visit the official Muzak station, which was in Middletown, Connecticut, and or actually it was in Meriden, Connecticut, and they had a big display of tape machines in the entryway to their storefront. And what I noticed was that among all these tape machines that were in the window, only one of them was running. So <laughs> their people all got the same music too. But the, the, the idea was that I think in that at that time, Muzak was kind of this, this pablum mush that um, was very low key. It was all specially recorded. Ours was too. And the purpose was kind of like to lull you into a state of, um, I don't know, mental nothingness. Right. Now it's exactly the opposite. You go into the supermarket and it's top 40 music. It's old top 40 music that you're going to hear. And the purpose of that is to distract you from making decisions. Correct. Mm. It's, and I think this is the nail on the head, maybe for me. I think music has a lot. Music is essentially information. We digest it differently, mm -hmm. but because it's information, we need to know how it, it's worthwhile to know how to 
interpret it correctly because it could be misused by people and turn into misinformation. Or oh, absolutely. Easily well, then used. isn't that really what, uh, you know, if we're talking about Christian music, isn't that, you know, sort of the object of it is to, uh, you know, lull you or lure you into that, that, that sort of sense of well, you know, like a false sense of well-being, I think. Mm -hmm. So here's my thing. In the sense, yes, but I am an atheist and I love Christian music because mm -hmm. I just like the patterns that they use. I like mm -hmm. the shimmery, chipper feeling, and I will listen to it knowing very well that I don't believe anything they're saying, but I like the songs. Like there's, I can, I can name like 40 different Christian songs right now that are pop standard that I love. And I think as long as you know what you're getting and you inform yourself to know how music works, it's okay. Cause music in my head is okay. Scott. Mm. Yeah. I was just going to piggyback on that. And what you and George were saying is that um, it's not like this stuff is a big mystery anymore. It's like mm -hmm. right now in the industry and you, and anybody can pick it up. I mean, you could go on YouTube. I think I've maybe sent you a few things, Tyrone. <laughs> yep. Um, you can go anywhere to any sort of musical teacher organization university, and they'll tell you um, one of the things that strikes you is that really um, with pop music, there's as much as four chord progressions. That's the rule because that's what people respond to. And it gets, you, you don't want to go past that because you sort of uh, muddy the water, so to speak with too right. much right. Um, with real underground dance music, you know, you have maybe just one chord or maybe two chord progressions at the most. Um, with my music, I'm kind of keeping it at two chord progressions through most of it. But then in a break, you'll notice I'll go into the four chord progression to kind of expand it out and let it breathe a little bit right. and then go back into yep. the little tight two chord progression groove to keep you locked in because that little two chord progression is where the magic happens. That's where that's where the gospel records are. They're in those two chord progressions. They don't go any more than that because they know that that's where you kind of keep people in that little groove and where their little, that little excitement resonates and it's kind of hypnotic and trippy. And the brain really likes that. The brain loves, you know, consistency, you know, that little loop, that little four, four loop going throughout the chord progression just kind of dances around that little tight little groove. And then when you get into a break, you kind of expand out into maybe four chord progressions or maybe even more. Um, it seems really complicated to the human brain, but it's really not complicated at all because if you go to the third chord progression or the fourth, it's just, it's just a different chord than your first chord. <laughs> That's all it is. And you're just adding it into it. So it's not, it's kind of like having a conversation. You're adding words into your sentences. It's nothing complicated about that. Right. You're just doing it, but it's really scientific. It's just like George was saying um, with pop music, they have a formula and it works. And until it doesn't work anymore, they're just going to stick to it. And that's just the way it goes. And it's important to know what that formula is. That's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Because then mm -hmm. well, all the bad stuff that can come from it doesn't have as much effect. Uh, you know, um, yeah, George. Go when ahead. I was Fred. when I was working in the recording industry, um, one studio I worked at, maybe more than any other, was a place called Bell Sound. And Bell Sound produced about one third of all the records that hit the top ten. Now, as Scott was saying, it's it's formulaic, and and these people at Bell Sound had the formula down pat. So record companies that had their own recording studios would send their rock stuff over to Bell Sound because they had the magic. Mm -hmm. So it's, it works. I mean, it's been doing um, that was 50, 60 years ago. I'm talking you know, about yeah. Jeff Pyro, yeah. what do you got? Well, I was going to say, um, maybe uh, Christian rock needs its own weird Al Yankovic, uh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and and I'm up to the task. I mean, if we can trans <laughs> if we can transcribe, yeah. translate some of this stuff into you know, Christian, uh, yeah. you know, sea shanties for the flying spaghetti yeah. monster. Arr, I'm all so, <laughs> so, so way back when Larry and I, when we were on the radio, we did a show for a band called The Quiet Company. A Quiet Company is the name of the band. And what's great about them is they were a former Christian rock band 
whose lead singer became an atheist, <laughs> explained it to the rest of the group, and the rest of the group became atheists as well. Wow. And so it was like mm. a very good, like it was during the time when the lead singer had a kid and he realized that all of his concerns about his religion, he couldn't just put onto this kid because like he had a lot of unresolved issues. Hashed them out, realized he didn't have a good reason to believe anymore, couldn't believe anymore as a result, explained to his group. And they're like, yeah, we have a problem with that too. We're not going to believe either. And they kept making the music. A Quiet Company, A Quiet Company. What was and the they, name of that album that we did though? Easy oh, Confidence or something? Oh man, they I have, we did three different albums, I think, on that show. And so uh, A Quiet Company, they released their stuff on YouTube as well. It's very widely available. But the thing is, it sounds just like Christian music. Yet, it is all secular driven. In fact, some of it's very much like, hey, here's a matter of fact how I became an atheist as a result of losing my religion. And so mm -hmm. it's just as bittersweet, just as painful. Yeah. George, uh, do you want somebody... Oh, go for it. Go for it, Larry. I was yeah. going to say real quick, somebody mentioned or asked me on the Facebook the other day, says, what good has atheism does for, done for the world? What, are, what have they ever done? <laughs> and I said, anything that's not particularly religious, you can yeah. mark up to atheism, <laughs> you know, because it's secularism, yeah, which right. is like what you're talking about now. Any song that's not particularly religious is a secular song. It's a beautiful album. It's a beautiful set of albums. They're still making music. Actually, Greg, would you mind standing up and showing our, our visual audience like more stuff that science came up with? You can thank us for, let's see, DNA, the laws of physics, uh, relativity, pea pods for genetic outlining Punnett squares, whole bunch of stuff. Schrodinger's cat we're going to have a conversation about. You guys know that's like <laughs> a little pet peeve. But Madame yeah, Curie's with x-rays, evolutions, electricity, so many things. All right, that's it. Sorry about that. Fibonacci's number's on there. That's awesome. George, mm -hmm. you look like you want to see some things. Go for it. <laughs> I have a few things. <laughs> I mean, one... One thing that we have going for us is that we have refrained from starting religious wars. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's, that's good. That's really good. Uh, boy, what was I going to say? Um, you know, the, the alternative to popular music is, you know, like uh, classical music, for instance, or j jazz, mm -hmm. where um, uh, the, the players have engaged in long form and, and uh, uh, you know, development of ideas. Um, complexity. That's the world I live in. Nice. Um, and and religious music uh, in the Renaissance, the Christian music, the, the Catholic Church stuff. Um, you know, composers like Akagam, Palestrina, De Lassus, um they, they wrote incredible music, um, a free, almost freeform counterpoint, the way I see it. And then once John Luther came in, uh, the Germans went to town with contrapuntalism and wrote wonderful religious music that I as an atheist really resonate with. And it presents me with terrible paradoxes because <laughs> my, my favorite composer set a little bit of anti-Semitic te text here and there, and my background is Jewish. Hey, and that's cool. So it puts me in a world of terrible paradox. And actually yeah. I like paradox, I'll, so. Hey, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this, cause I get that same vibe. Cause for me, it's like, I like the moral teachings of David Hume, but he was a avid, uh, proponent for slavery, right? And so what he I thought is people who come up with good things that I like, those things tend to have existed before those people had said them, right? Like mm -hmm. people who come up even with good music, that music was probably already around, like it's the in bits and pieces maybe, <laughs> and some guy inspired and put them together. But like those notes were already existing before some guy who mm -hmm. maybe was anti-Semitic decided to publish them. So like good things can still exist even if knuckleheads are the ones to be the ones distributing it. So you can still like the good things. Yeah. They are not be, the same thing as life that, that would be a great topic for, for a show, actually. It's, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> people's, people's background, you know, like, yeah. uh, I, I wanna, can, I wanna can we forgive their bad points, uh, you know, and celebrate their good points? Yeah, I don't think we even have to forgive the bad points. We can just appreciate the work. Mm -hmm. Apart from the person, right? I'd like to finish what I was saying b oh, because it, it's important to me that after the Baroque period in music, uh, uh, about 1750, uh, it deteriorated. the The religious music 
got much simpler and plainer and became melody and accompaniment. And all, all music did. I mean, classical yeah. music did, the religious music, and the spark went out of religious music mm -hmm. as, I, as I've experienced it. You know, formal, um, let's say, the, the white Christian church, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just lost it, you know. It's, yeah. it's been pablum ever since. You know, man, there's so many different directions I can take this. George, I will touch on something you had said earlier. I do think that there is scientifically a song you can play while you're holding for someone on the phone that is mathematically guaranteed to make you listen to them, the, the hold music longer and stay on the phone longer than it would if there were no music or some other song. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we figured out the song that makes a person stay on the line an extra minute. <laughs> Good. And then I'll also throw this out. I think, like I said, music is information, but it's also can be formatted like a language. And languages are interesting because they can be, they can follow different standards based on your geolocation and how much access you have to other different kinds of cultures. And so when I hear music from like Japan, like rock music that's in Japan compared to like rock music in America, it's almost startling because they follow completely different standards of conventions than the music that's, you know, reached sort of like a homogeneity or, or pablum here in the US. And so it's refreshing to listen to, to rock from Sweden. That's like original rock or original rock in China, or original rock in Japan, because it's just the right instrumentation, but completely different understanding of how, what chords sound good together, what notes go good together. And so when I was a kid, I used to listen to a lot of music that was from overseas and thought I was nerdy. <laughs> to bring it up to my friends, but actually just turned out that I just needed like a refreshing point of new perspective to like help me continue to evolve musically. And I think that's the key for a lot of people who feel like, you know, music is sort of becoming the same thing. It's the same thing with atheists. Like you can't just be an atheist in a room, expose yourself to new ideas and realize why you're an atheist, right? And like, and same thing with music, like expose yourself to new different kinds of musics so that you're reformed with what you like and maybe can can take some of that stuff from other people and then form or enhance your bouquet of different sounds and, and chord progressions that you turn to appreciate. Uh, Scott, tell me about some of your inspirations for your music and do any of them come from overseas? Yeah, so of course, like I lived in Germany for quite a while, but I was kind of always into the electronic dance music scene, but actually, um, a lot of my inspiration comes from a lot of classic rock music. I used to love, and I still do love the classics, you know, this classic rock stuff. Um, and that feel kind of ha resonates with me. So it, it comes through in my, in my own music. It's just like you said, you, you kind of combine a lot of different things. Like I like funk music, like mm. R and B and soul and, you know, hip hop, classic rock. There's a lot of stuff, jazz, and you'll hear a lot of that influence in different tracks of mine and different songs. And so I think I'm no different than anybody else in that regard. Like everything that you kind of create doesn't come out of a vacuum. Right. It comes from your history, you know, of what, um, you know, influenced you. It's kind of unavoidable. Even the things we say, the things we believe, all of that stuff is it is just an effect of a cause that goes all the way down the line. I agree. So yeah, I'd agree with you a hundred percent. I feel like uh, George made another comment too. He said like white church music, and I've gone to a lot of churches where military were moving around all the times. So we need people to help us move, but I've seen Presbyterian, Lutheran, Methodist, ba uh, not Baptist, Baptist or my black church, but I've seen white black Baptist churches and they, mm -hmm. they have the same Psalm book. And like, I know those songs very well. <laughs> oh, 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 here I come. It's like very, very droner. But I've been to black churches where it's like, holy crap. Oh, excuse my mm -hmm. language. The music that is playing out here is not even like it. I can't even break it down into forms or a template. It's just constant improvisation on top of improvisations on top of each other and loud and like funky, but then also mm -hmm. like almost chaotic and i'm like do people get what i get out of like the white churches <laughs> this is like yes because when we do this music our culture is like the music that you can't necessarily play on every radio station like it's not about the 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 four 
by four emphasis on two and a four because that's what sells to you know white demographics this is about us and what our culture represents and here's our funk here's our jazz here's our r&b here's our drum and bass here's our technically proficient standards for music and this is what we've infused our religious spiritual music with because that's what connects to us the sense of pride and belonging that we <laughs> <laughs> it's like whoa and then your ears are ringing as you walk up and you're like man that was super fun Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to comment on this. Yeah, um, to me, if I contrast the what what my experience is of of uh, white Christian church music with black Christian church music, it's like I walked into a restaurant one day and I had the ultimate sandwich. It was white bread with white turkey on with white gravy. <laughs> Some people, that's their gem, and there's nothing wrong with that. But. Well, like that church in so uh, California, <clears throat> when I went to that church in California, it was a it was a black band playing, and it just gets to the point where the the music sort of is very emotional, hmm. and it gets to a point where it's just kind of chaotic, where it's just like yes. la 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 la, and everybody's getting into it, and it's like very hypnotic. Yeah. And it's emotional and it's like you're you're tired after it. Like after yes. it's done, you're like, oh yeah. that's exactly wow, what, what a you're journey so that was. Yeah. Yeah, yes. you're exhausted yeah. Well, and it's different. But you, you take know? that idea and you go back to like drum circles in Nambia, right? Or you go to like mm -hmm. Nigeria and you listen to like their old chantings. Like that is mm -hmm. almost textbook like that's what you do at a drum circle. That's what you do mm -hmm. when you're chanting with friends. It's not about learning fourteen different verses and singing them one after the other. It's about getting exhausted together to feel like you got something out of you. Cause that's mm -hmm. how it sounds like a grateful dead show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been to a few. It's, it's, it's a, it's a real experience. Mm -hmm. yep. Larry, what's up? <laughs> you got a puppy? He's on mute. My friend. You're, You're on mute. mute. Uh, still on mute. Uh, you're on mute on zoom. Oh, it's okay. We'll we'll give him some time to figure that out. I but never yeah. used that on there. There he is. I must have accidentally turned it on. No, I was saying, especially in church, there there's a choreography that brings you to a peak of excitement mm -hmm. and then lets you down. And it's it's uh, there's a technical term for it called spiritual manipulation, where they can then manipulate you uh, to a point where you feel like this feeling of relief mm -hmm. release and uh, you're more willing to give uh, mm -hmm. put in the into the plate as it were <laughs> that's uh, spiking the sound waves with ayahuasca <laughs> yeah that. it's the same sort of you, thing yeah you just put some drips into the air conditioning that's, how it <laughs> that's happens, right. right uh but yeah music like i said my takeaways here is music is a good thing it totally is but it's also in my head just as powerful as a language or any sort of other communication tool which means that the more educated you are about how it works the more it can do for you in terms of making it yourself or keeping you from getting manipulated by people who might know the system better than you. Mm -hmm. And it's and if you think that you are above manipulation, and if you think that you are above any sort of coercion through music, you are the prime target right. for mm -hmm. coercion and manipulation by people yeah. who already know it better than you. And so this, is, it, is it like critical listening? It is like, <laughs> just like that. It's it. It's, that's that's it. how I work. It's being That's able to, work. Work. and you can still enjoy music with a critical ear. In mm -hmm. fact, I, yes. I, I enjoy it even more now that I mm -hmm. criticize it yes. and think about it more. Mm -hmm. I was listening to music when I was just uh, going out doing my workout this morning, and I'm like listening to certain songs, and it's like love song, love song, love song, and it's like, ooh, I'm so tired of like the way you're setting this up. And like the standards, like this singer probably doesn't know the band <laughs> and the engineer probably doesn't know the, the instruments. Like this just yeah. sounds like too many different ideas put together. And you got people who are featured in this song who probably just didn't even hear the final track before they wrote the lyrics. <laughs> right, it's right. like, no, nothing about this is cohesive. And then you get that one song that's like, <clears throat> you know what? This is great. And you, you add that in and you thumbs it up and it becomes a part of your soundtrack. And it's for my head, it's like a meditation on myself of what I appreciate because I'm willing to listen to music more than just at face value. I'm willing to let it become like a part of like my headspace. And I think we, if we just take a little bit more caution with that, at least with our music, 
with how we talk to people, with how we garner information, we could be so much better as a people, so much better as a community. There's potential there, at least. Uh, Dread, final words, what do you think? Um, well, more shanties. More shanties. <laughs> more shanties. <laughs> we, world needs more shanties. Yep. World I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to have a look at uh, so a couple of Christian songs and see if I can't... Uh, you know, rework some lyrics and, you know, I've, I've done a little singing in my own time and, uh, nice. uh yeah, I'll maybe we work with, uh, with you guys here. And nice. nice. I'll be yeah. down. I'll be down. I'll be yeah, down. That'd cool. be be really down. Fun. Yeah. Really yeah. fun. Yeah. If it works for TikTok, it can work for us. I think <laughs> that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, well, I, ju I just want to mention that uh, since, since uh, you got me here, um, that I do, uh, broadcast this on my YouTube channel, mind pirate, uh, M I N D P Y R A T E. And I do that uh, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So check it Very out. Very nice. Mind Pirate P Y R A T. Yeah. And I've got 92, 92 um, uh, followers. I need 100 so I can modify my channel. So like me and follow me. <laughs> nice. Uh, George, I'm not going to say last words because that's so morbid, but what's your final thoughts? Uh, for well, I have two things I want to mention. If if you'd like to hear something with a little more depth than you need a catharsis, I would like to recommend the song cycles, any song cycle by Gustav Mahler, and have have the libretto on hand, the text to translate it from German to English for yourself. It, it'll be a profound experience. Uh, the other one I want to say is Frankie Lyman. Why Do Fools Fall in Love? One of the happiest pieces of music I've ever heard in my life. I love it. Very cool. Oh, man. There is so much beautiful music that I could recommend. Uh, I would highly recommend Claire de Lune, not by mm. Debussy, actually, uh, because he's dead and there's no actual tracks from him playing it. But uh, Hiromi, uh, who's a Japanese um, pianist, but also modern I don't even know what you would describe it as, but she it's progressive jazz and she's done a rendition on Claire de Lune, Hiromi. And I think her three piece ensemble probably nails that essence of that song more than any other rendition of that song ever done. There's points where all three of them are playing and straining together and they're sweating and they're so happy when they're playing the song and then so sad together at the same time that you can't even tell that it's three different instruments playing. It sounds like one thing, just moving up and swelling and and, and, and moving up and down. But Hiromi- So who is this? Hiromi, H-I-R-O-M-I, -I, Hiromi. And then uh, Claire de Lune is their, her rendition. It's a three-part ensemble. All of them are so good. Anyway, Scott. Mm -hmm. Last words before we head out for this week, my friend. Yeah, please, 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 please. I beg you, check out uh, the, the the new EP that I put out, man. Um, I'm really trying to promote it, really trying to bring awareness to it. It's up to us, up Deborah to us. Magone and Dubshine. Up to us. It's the EP. Yeah, check I it out. I posted it on the YouTube on my YouTube channel. So. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. you. Comments, the comments. Repeat that. Repeat that, please. Could you? Uh -huh. It's uh, Deborah Magone and uh, D E B O R A H. Magone is spelled M A G O N E. And Dubshine, which is two words D U B space A S H I N E. And the name of the EP is Up to Us. And you can see it on Spotify, Spotify and all major you know outlets like Amazon, iTunes, you name it. Up to us. us. Yes. Larry, I'm a little jealous because if I try to keep my cat on my lap for that long, I'm going to walk away with stitches. <laughs> <laughs> my, my doggy is 21 years old. No. Not very active. So he's not going to give me any kind of problem or she. Okay. Here. She did want down though. So I had to let her down a second ago. Okay. Okay. Um, Last words, Larry. The, uh, if we're talking about concerts and, and music and, and recommendations, uh, if you like pieces that feature concert violinists, I recommend Vaughn Williams' The Lark Ascending. Oh. 
L A R K, the lark ascending. I My second that. That is a beautiful piece of music. It is a great piece. Yes. My own content uh, with atheism is uh, on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. I have a book that's called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. And you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. If you have any questions for the show, send them by email email to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. We'll answer them on future shows. If you're having any trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and a lot of people do struggle with that, you can get help by visiting recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism was true. <laughs>